okay let's uh, we talked about if statement so we haven't really dealt with iterations or looping uh, statements so so this is the example of a simple loop uh, you probably might be knowing but let me just explain you are starting with uh, something and you are assign you are uh, declaring num is equals to one and uh, num less than or equals five if it's true it prints this if it's false it goes this and boom it stops while loop so while and for uh, uh, two of the famous looping statements we will be looking into and uh, the expression is pretty simple like the if you have the while keyword and you have the boolean expression need to be passed into if it satisfies it will go over this statement if not it will complete the loop so this is a pretty simple example of num and uh, we've seen the flowchart we just uh, replicating the same in terms of python code so while num is less than or equals 5 this will be executed and uh, it will be implemented for num equals to num plus 1 this is uh, this will be uh, residing within the for loop for for, uh, for loop for loops but for while we have to iterate it by ourselves uh, or um, if we don't iterate it, it will just simply complete this statement and it will go to the next one. For for loop, it will be like uh, inside the library itself. There will be like auto increment operation going behind the scenes. You won't be able to see. You don't have to use this for for loops. So yeah, that's the difference between while and for for now. Uh, so let's see this example. So total count are initiated to zero and total is less than five. We we are just checking the condition which is true so this will go over this and uh, let's just try this try just only one uh, so okay <laughs> even if i want to this won't go well because pc input is a customized library that is designed for our class so it basically what it does is uh, instead of getting the input get integer we will use this and uh, we will pass whatever the parameter we want to if it doesn't satisfy that data type it will keep on asking so that is a simple program that we wrote for the class so this won't work because i don't have the library file we will check a different example which doesn't use pc input so infinite or end loop is something that will never ends we need to be very cautious about it uh, for loop can end up with infinite looping statements so we need to be cautious uh, while we are giving the conditions if it is like ever running loop the, your pc might crash so be aware of that for statement is pretty simple for letter in letter okay so when it comes to for when we are using strings uh, we need to understand how it works so this is a pretty good example of using a for statement let's do that so far so letter is like a for i so instead of like a variable we are using the word uh, we are using the variable letter so it will go over this string in an incremental fashion so letter will be assigned value b for the first iteration and letter will be assigned the value a for second iteration and it keeps going on like i said for doesn't have an incremental operation it runs behind the scene so if i run this i expect to see b a n a n a in each and every line and it will print done and it will print the letter so just think what would be the letter output for this statement so like i said banana will be printed in a separate line for each and every iteration and it will print done once it exits out of the loop and it prints a because the last value for the iteration is a so it will be saved inside the variable letter and it will just passing through, through the letter so that's a pretty good example of it so uh, use a variable that contains a collection so we are passing the word banana to the variable word and we are just instead of using a string over here we are just passing a variable and replicating the same thing that is done before so it's pretty much the same most of the time we will use something like this rather than something like this so this is just a uh, uh, different way of understanding how for loop works you can check it by yourself so so why do you think that it's not the same to change the collection or the variable inside the loop let's check this example to answer that question okay 
so a for loop inside a for loop this is something that we can check into um, from my understanding the letter will be assigned value a and it will become true it will go over this and it will print df once and for b it will print df again for c it will print df again so i can see three pairs of df and for each time i will see the value of letter a b and c in between let's see how it works okay, that is unexpected error. Oh, no. so def is printed and f is the value that is at the last iteration of each and every value of abc so we are just seeing that so that's pretty much it go to the next example function range okay range is a uh, is a inbuilt function that you can use to define a you know a list of numbers uh, so range file let's see what it does So when I mention range 5, it will take the value of uh, 0 till 4. So 5 means 5 elements starting from 0 until 4. So total number is 5. Like any other programming language, it star, uh, Python starts with 0. So not a big difference to consider. So two range arguments. So basically this will uh, give you... Oh, I forgot actually first one is the starting okay so first one will start from 2 and it will I think it will end at 4 so you don't have to necessarily memorize everything you can simply play with it and try to see yeah like I said it starts with true and it ends before 5 so <clears throat> this is something that uh, I, have, I have to always check uh, in terms of machine learning if you are trying to go over a particular dictionary so you want to go over till a point you have to reach before so n minus one so keep that index in mind so you want to go over nth number of index you have to give the index value as n plus one at the iteration so that, so this basically go over from two to ten in increments of three so not a big difference so the list of fruits a is called a tuple so now we are talking about tuples we haven't seen tuples yet so uh, tuples, strings, lists, dictionaries and sets are different kind of data types uh, we will be going over. So we seen strings right. So the bunch of strings which is intended in between brackets will be considered as tuples. Okay so I just said tuple but we don't know whether what type it is. Let's just keep type. So I'm just passing as a variable rather than a bunch of strings which is intended in between brackets. So yeah, this is the type tuple. So the, the main difference between a tuple and list is that it will be inside normal brackets and for list it will be inside square brackets. and. Uh, one other important difference between tuples and list is that uh, it is immutable in like the string you cannot go inside an index and try to manipulate the value of a tuple and string also the same case you cannot uh, just go over a particular index and change a particular character uh, uh, for list you can do that so we will see that in a later point of time so yeah, break statement is to break a particular statement, not the entire Python code uh, to exit out of it. So you can use break statements if you want to exit that particular loop and you have to use inside the loop. So that's what it means. So if I use break here, it will break the if statement and it will continue with the rest of the statements. So you can play with it. Yeah, that's what it means. Just return it over there. So, 
nested loops okay so we have seen one for loop within a for loop so this is another example we can just quickly go over it so range 3 which is 0 1 2 so that will be the number of uh, iterations i believe it will be over so for each value of i uh, we will have set of four values printed so let's just see so in my understanding it will basically like 4 3 3 12 so it will have 12 values i believe So for i0 we have 4 values and we have set of 0, 1, 2, 4, 3, 7, 1. like I said there are like 12 outputs. So this is to give a simple understanding of what multiple looping does. 